All right, so I am continuing the compositing of our creature, but I am going to be using Photoshop for this because of the power outages we're having making internet not available. So throughout these demos, I've used the, the metaphor of assembling a car on an assembly line for how we composite the creature. And that's because different parts get assembled at different places, and then they all get brought together and welded onto the chassis. So that's where we are right now. We have the sketch that we built up, we have the inspiration, and now we have all the parts kind of roughly welded onto a chassis. Uh, one of the last things I did was crop down to save extra space. And now I need to work on all of these different aspects, the body, the tail, the head, which all have their own component parts. So they're all organized into layer groups, except for the tail, which is just one piece. Actually, there's something. So there's some uh, debris as part of the body that I need to get rid of, because that's showing up on top of the tail. So I'm going to click through the eyeballs. There we go. It's in this layer. And I know I don't need it there. So I just lasso and delete. And behind everything, I just have a blank layer of middle gray. It just helps me see that kind of debris that needs to get cleaned up. So that when you put the, the finished car on the showroom floor, there isn't a bunch of like oil and mess around it. So it looks nice and clean. So when I turn off the background, it will just float perfectly on the transparent grid. And we will save it as a PNG file to post to Canvas. But that PNG file will work as a sticker that we can then bring into our fantasy landscape. All right, so let's do this. I have my inspiration somewhere. There he is. And so this inspiration can work for coloring and lighting for you as well. You can see that the inspiration is lit from this angle. And that's kind of why I chose this as the belly. It's lit from a similar angle. But I also have some reflected light or a secondary lighting coming from the back. And I can use that as well and on the head. So I'm going to start with the head and the coloring of the head. Or maybe, maybe work between these two parts of the body. I know the feet are pretty close to the coloring I want. So if I look at the different parts of the body, this is the big one right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Image Adjustments. And first, I'm going to play with Levels just like we do with the landscape. I think I'm going to limit the highlights a little bit with this limiting the output levels. And I'm going to limit the shadows just a little bit. And then I can play with the midtones and decide if I want to kind of lighten it overall or darken it overall. I think so that it blends with the chest a little bit better. You see transitions down. I want to lighten it a little bit overall. So pretty subtle change. This is what that looks like from this to this. Then I can go to image and I can start playing with color. So I'm going to start with color balance. I'm going to start with the midtones. This is a little bit different than Photo P, but the exact same functionality under image adjustments, color balance. I'm going to shift the midtones of this part of the body more towards yellow, not too much, more towards red. So that it starts to blend a little bit with the oranges and tans of that. That's starting to work. I'm going to go to highlights, push it just a little bit towards yellow, a little bit towards red. Yep, I like that. Then I'm going to go to shadows and I'm going to do the opposite. Push it a little bit towards blue, just a little, and a little bit towards cyan, because I don't want to risk making it monochrome. So the difference might be subtle, but it's from this, which looks a little kind of bluer throughout, to this, which feels a little warmer throughout, and still very believable. But that seemed to make some of my shadows a little bit deeper than I want. So I can go to Image Adjustments, go back to Levels, and then 
limit those just a little bit. Even brighten the midtones a little bit more if I think it needs it. It's based on how I think the fur will absorb information, absorb light. Okay, next, we're going to play with the big adjuster of color, which is hue saturation. And I'm not looking for anything too wild here, but it's always nice to kind of see how it can be pushed in hue. So I'm going to warm it up a little bit, maybe saturate it a little bit. And then I'm not going to use lighten or darken here because I have a better tool with that with levels because this will just do it everywhere. But if anything, it could probably go a little bit darker in the midtones. So I'll leave that for now at zero. So there's that change. Very subtle. It just warms it up a little bit. So now that's starting to work with the tail a little bit better, with the arms a little better, with the feet a little bit better, but I can adjust all of those. Let's see. Let's deal with the feet next. I'm going to start with the levels adjustment and just take the midtones. A little bit darker since they're underneath the body with a strong shadow there. Going to limit the highlights a little bit as well for the same reason. And maybe limit the shadows just a bit so they're not quite so dark. Okay. I can always burn uh, shadows as well. But we're going to see what we can do with the overall adjustments. Trying to make the most efficient use of my laptop battery here. So next I'm going to go to color balance. And I'm going to take a little bit of the yellows away from these midtones because those are very yellow. But push them a little bit towards the orange by adding red. Again, not crazy amounts. I'm not trying to lose the color content that's there. I'm just trying to shift it in a way that helps. And then for the highlights, I'm going to push it towards a little bit more warmth. Just very slightly. And then for the shadows, bring a little bit of that coolness back. And that helps kind of bring everything into the same range. Remember, color balance is adjusting the color temperature. So it's like it's all lit with by the same temperature light. Now I can go to hue saturation, the big guns, change the whole hue and decide maybe maybe I want them just a little bit redder overall. Just a touch. Maybe a tiny bit desaturated. And again, I could play with the lightness and the darkness overall. If anything, maybe darken them a little bit, which I'll be doing with the, um, the dodged with the burn tool. So I guess, I guess I can get away with that. Okay, and I'm not doing dodge and burn until I've done the big direct adjustments to everything in the layer before that. Now the tail because all of this bottom portion now, trying to finish off all the coloring for that, go to levels. I'm definitely going to, to darken those midtones. That is pretty darn dark, but I might have to do that with the dodge tool. To lighten that up because if I just limit the output levels then I lose a lot of that pixel contrast. But I think about there for levels. 
can limit the highlights a little bit too. Yeah, that helps. Okay, now color balance. This is the tail, so I'm actually going to shift it, and it's that source was already lit with pretty yellow light, so I'm going to shift it a little bit more towards the cyans and the blues. So it feels similar. In the highlights, though, I'm going to still put some warm tones into it. Shift towards the yellows and the reds. And in the shadows, I'm going to push it towards the cyans and the blues. And you get to decide how much. I like to have uh, cool shadows, warm highlights. It uses the color temperature to help with the overall value range. Okay, next. <laughs> it's so funny to kind of shave him. Now that we've got that body, see what our other components are. We have the little spine ridge of fur. I think that's fine as it is. Then we have that front arm. We have that arm. We have that arm. So it's all in pieces. So this, 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 nope, not that. So what I'm going to do is bring these together into one layer as much as possible. So I'm going to hold down sh uh, Command, select these different layers, and then say, well, at least merge the ones I can, because some are on top of others. So I'm going to take these two that are on top, and I'm going to say Layer merge layers. Action key E. It's the same in photo P. That brings those together. And then this layer and this layer I'm going to merge together. Hold down shift because they're touching. And then action key E, merge them together. And I'm going to start with the one underneath. See how much difference that makes to play with levels. So there's a lot of internal compositing here. So I think I want to brighten the midtones a little bit, at least for that side. Limit the highlights, though. Go to color balance. Warm it up in the midtones. Hmm. You actually put it a little towards cyan and yellow in the midtones. Just looking at the back there and on this fin. And then the highlights. Push it a little towards red, a little towards yellow, and then in the shadows, bring in that cyan and bring in that blue. Yeah, so we're getting some nice complex color variations there. And I think I'm probably going to have to use the sponge tool to desaturate this back edge a little bit for that. And then for this, kind of arm sweeping up, I have to treat that separately because it's on top of the belly. And then same thing, levels, and brighten the midtones, just a little bit, and limit the highlights. Play with the levels. I just did that, that looked good. Okay, play with the color balance. All the same. That's my power coming back on, so don't mind that. <laughs>